Today we're going to talk about schema. So this is really going to help prepare you for your um, schema, uh, schema um, lab that is going to be due next week and in the instrument that's due this week. So let's get started. So remember that the theoretical frameworks that we associate with schema are both cognitive and social constructivism. So that should be our frameworks for your labs. Um, remember that when we're talking about cognitive constructivism, we're talking about that idea of continuous adaptation. So you should be thinking about that. You know, you're in the initial scheme, you have that in equilibrium, you understand the world, and you have some sort of new experience um, that leads us to a state of disequilibrium. That's our engine of development that leads us to either assimilate or accommodate, right? We're either going to incorporate our new experience into our existing scheme, or we're going to accommodate, we're going to modify our existing scheme. If we accommodate, and that, that's what we call our mechanism of development, then we're, we reach a new state of equilibrium, right? And again, like, I think I talked about this in our, we were talking about this, um, we were talking about their theories of educational psychology. But if you haven't had this transformational experience in college, you haven't gotten your money's worth. So I hope you do have these experiences where you're at a state of disequilibrium and you have to change your theory of the world. You have to change the way you see the world, right? We're, we keep doing this. We think of, um, constructivism is something that happens in our early childhood, but I hope that it's still happening to you today. I hope that you're still experiencing these learning opportunities, right? Okay, so this is one way to think of schema, right? Cognitive constructivism. We can also think about um, our um, social constructivism and the zone of proximal development, right? So we have our child's current level of achievement, and that zone of proximal development um, is a little bit beyond that current achievement where we can stretch them and grow them with those scaffolding in place, right? Um, where we need that assistance from another person, that social aspect of constructivism, right? Where they can reach those complex accomplishments. Okay, so we can assess schema in, um, through concept maps or through solo taxonomy. So with concept maps, um, you're thinking about one concept, so you might think about um, some ideas might be something like democracy or photosynthesis or division or poetry, right? So some big idea that you could have some complex understanding about, right? Um, for solo taxonomy, and that stands for the structured op of observed learning outcomes, you want to think about some open-ended questions. So some ideas might be, why does rain fall? Why did the American colonies revolt against the British? Why does sea squared plus equal a squared plus b squared only work with right triangles um, or what makes a piece of literature a greek tragedy so we're thinking about these open-ended questions um, so we'll talk a little bit more detail about both of these so we'll start off with concept maps so what is a concept map it's a graphical tool that's used to convey relationships in the organization of conceptual understanding so i really like concept maps because not only is it helping us know what a student knows about a concept, but it also tells us how they've organized that understanding, that, con that conceptual understanding. So students can use symbols, words, and even visual representations, and they can also use relational words. Um, so the components of a concept map include the concepts, the groupings, that's how things are grouped together, branching, so how they are organized, propositions, so how things are linked, so if they add words, to describe those relationships. The hierarchy, so um, how many levels are in that, in those groupings. Cross-links are how, they've, um, how they're linking different groups together, and we'll look at some examples. So um, here's a really simple like, example, right? So if this was somewhat, this is a concept map that a student turned in about weather, I would think, wow, the student really doesn't understand that much about weather, right? They have some words that are associated with weather. There's no linking in between them, right? And they're not really related to each other. Um, let's compare it to this example. Here is um, This is an example of a family's kayak trip to Canada, right? We can see that there's lots of detail. They included words that connect how these words are related to each other. So you can see they traveled by car and their distance, the time, where they stayed, where they, what they went, um, where they stayed at, where the services were. So you can kind of see in this example that they've used lots of propositional words and that all of this makes sense, right? 
Our last example, this is an example of St. Nicholas, right? Well, look at all of the cross links here, right? So we're connecting St. Nicholas to Black Peter, right? Um, we've talked about how St. Nicholas is related to Santa Claus, how there's cross links between Black Peter and St. Nicholas, right? Um, we can see that whole kind of circle where it starts with St. Nicholas to birthday to poles to North Pole to Santa Claus, right? All of these things show us that this student has a really deep understanding of St. Nicholas, right? So we can see even from this exam these three examples how looking at a concept map can really show us the conceptual understandings, the schema that a student has about a particular concept. So as you're thinking about what schema you might assess based upon your content area and what you want to teach someday, what your, what your degree will be in, what your content area, what your teaching profession will be, you might be thinking about using a concept map for your schema instrument lab. The other one we'll talk about, oh, so we don't, you don't have to actually take a break, but um, I would like you, um, before you start your lectures for next week, to create a concept map about some idea, some big idea, um, in your content area. So next week we're going to be doing an activity where we learn how to assess schema. So be sure that you have done this so that you can practice next week, okay? The next one we'll talk about is solo taxonomy. So that's the structured observation of learning outcomes. So um, in a solo, act, a solo um, activity, um, we are examining responses to open-ended questions to assess how many relevant pieces of data a student can use and how these relevant pieces of data relate by induction or deduction. So generalizing only within their system of information or using logic to generalize outside of the system. And if there's inconsistencies, so if they can get different answers using the same data, or if they have this need for closure, if they have this need to find an answer, um, which may kind of express um, less um, schema about a, about a situation. So again, I want to um, assess um, our ability to score solo activities next week. So over this week, I want you to also kind of jot down, spend like, you know, no more than five minutes answering the question, are polar bears adapted to their environment? Why or why not? And then we'll talk about how to score solo activities next week. So the key to creating a good solo activity is they're open-ended. So the question might be, why do cells die, not how long do cells live? Um, you want to, the question should enable students to explain using more than one piece of data and how to relate relevant pieces of data to each other, right? So they should be able to present some sort of argument. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your assignment this week. Again, all of this information is available on Canvas in the assignment. I just copied and pasted the information from the assignment page. So the purpose is to um, develop a method to measure schema, um, interpret that data, and then connect it to, um, to what you might do in the classroom. So um, you want this, um, again, you're going to create this instrument and then you need to add the construct you're measuring to the comment section. So the construct is schema about something. So you're not measuring, you know, um, the Civil War, because that would be silly. You can't measure the Civil War. You can measure student schema about the Civil War. So make sure that you add schema into your construct to get full points. Okay, everyone hear that? Add schema to your construct to get full points and make sure that your You've labeled the construct, you've told me the construct in the comment section of your submission. Okay, and keep in mind that you're going to need to have at least two people complete this scheme activity for next week. So you might be thinking about, you know, if you have, you know, family members or roommates or friends that you can bother in order to take this. Um, you could also use um, people in your small group. Um, on, your, on your bulletin board discussion boards in this class, you could exchange. Um, and each do each other's schema, schema activities. Um, you can organize all of that on those discussion boards as well. Okay, so some other notes about the class. Remember, so the submission should be submitted as a document. Um, you can handwrite it and scan it in as a PDF. You can make it a Word document or a PDF file. Remember that if you use a Mac, that you need to convert that into something that my computer can open. Again, in the comments section, you should specify your construct. 
and it should be something that you would use in schools. So don't have someone write, you know, their schema about mixing drinks because that's not something you would measure in school, right? So think about something you would measure in school. The format um, should have some sort of description of the task. So if it's a, um, if you're doing a concept map, it should only have the concept in the middle. So it could have a circle with, you know, geometry in the middle, but don't add extra lines coming out of it because that will only limit students in thinking that they should, if you have five lines coming out, they're only gonna add five concepts around the edge. So don't add anything except that concept in the middle, along with a set of instructions about what you'd like their students to do. Um, that could be instructions on that sheet of paper, or it could be a set of written instructions that you would tell the students orally. Um, if it's a solo writing prompt, you know, same thing. Just have the prompt there along with maybe some instructions. Um, then the, con the construct, again, should be in the comments section. Um, and again, you're going to need at least two people to complete this task for next week, so just keep that in mind. Um, again, if you have any questions about this task, um, feel free to email me your questions or we can set up a time to meet in my office or to talk on the phone. And I look forward to seeing your projects this week. Bye!